let's go ahead and get started. This is exciting. Um, so we've got, so everybody is aware, we've got 42 participants um, on the line, which is absolutely fabulous. Um, this is a follow-up to last week's um, business roundtable that we held, and we have some more information on resources that are available at the local, state, and federal level. And so um, we just wanted to sort of do this as a follow-up to that last conversation we had, kind of let you um, let you know what some of the resources are that are out there, um, the things that we're doing to sort of help you connect to those resources and um, so a couple of housekeeping things and um, just so you know if you go to the bottom of your um, of your zoom if you're not familiar with this program at the very bottom um, you'll see a list of uh, different options and one of them says participants which is 47 right now if you click on that there'll be a little thing to this side that pops out and it has the list of everybody who's on the phone and then it also has a feature called um, raise hand and so if you um, obviously you're welcome to jump in but that if for folks who are wanting to sort of halt um, what I'm talking about and want me to pause if you can raise your hand that'll sort of flag that for me and my staff and we'll make sure we get to your questions um, the other thing is just a reminder as you're coming on to please mute um, your phone. If you can, you can do it. If you're using the Zoom, there's a mute um, button there, at that same uh, sort of bottom toolbar. Um, if you're on your phone, if you can go ahead and mute that as well. And if you need to unmute, if you're just using the phone, you'll just um, push star six is how you'll unmute your phone. Um, so with that, I wanted to just do a couple of quick follow-ups. Um, there were a few things that you guys had requested of us during our last meeting um, before we dive into resources that I just wanted to bring you up to speed on. Um, one of the suggestions was that we um, create sort of a, a hub of information related to COVID-19, everything from business resources to employment to health issues to local um, closures. Um, and so we um, appreciated that feedback. Um, my staff took that and ran with it. And so they already have um, a community resource center that's up on Gillum County's website. So if you're curious about that or wanna go check it out, um, thank you to the folks who suggested that online. Um, we, we appreciate that. Um, so with that, I want to just jump it right in. I'm going to be sharing my screen here. Um, so bear with me just a second and I'll get my slide deck up. Okay, so we're going to just move right in. So I wanted to just um, actually jump right in on um, some potential resources for um, impacted employees. I know quite a few of you had mentioned that um, one of the big concerns was what to do about employees. And I know some of you had discussed um, already needing to close and laying off employees. And so I wanted to just walk through some resources. I'm hoping that you can help us share these um, with your folks. Um, one um, is unemployment benefits. If you've already laid off workers due to COVID-19, um, we are strongly urging those employees to apply for un unemployment benefits as soon as possible. Um, the CARES Act, which was passed by Congress here about a week ago, um, has an additional boost of $600 a week for those who have lost their jobs. And um, it also, um, unlike in normal situations, the unemployment insurance now will cover those who are self-employed or work as independent contractors. So that's a huge um, potential uh, resource for folks, for instance, who are masseuse or hair stylists or those sorts of things where you're an independent contractor, normally you wouldn't be eligible for unemployment insurance and this time you are. Um, so we have a link um, and again, I'll have this slide deck, um, we'll have it on Gillum County's website as well as the Chamber's website. So you can go directly to the slide deck and click the link um, to go to um, the online portal for applying. Um, I also wanted to just flag for folks who are running restaurants and have had to lay off folks um, 
for that, that um, there, there's a restaurant employee relief fund that is providing $500 grants to employees in the restaurant um, industry who have been impacted financially by COVID-19. So laid off, reduced hours, those kinds of things. They're given on a first come first serve basis until the fund is exhausted and this is a nationwide fund. So we're assuming that's gonna happen rather quickly given the number of layoffs that we have nationwide in the restaurant industry. Um, so that grant opens up on um, April 2nd and we've got a link again in the slide deck um, so this would be great to sort of share with your employees um, who have been laid off. And then the other thing I just wanted to share, um, this coming from our federal delegation, there's been a lot of questions about the rebate checks for individuals. And so I wanted to um, just kind of give you some background that um, here's, here's what they are. Individuals will receive rebates worth $1,200 for individuals. That's um, 2400 for couples plus an additional $500 per child under the age of 17. So for a family of four, that's um, $3,400. They phase out at um, $75,000 for an individual, um, $122,000 for a head of household, and $150,000 for, um, for joint filers. So um, it's based on the tax return from this year or last year. Um, depending on if you filed your taxes yet, um, and to receive a, a rebate check or direct deposit, and those should be going out in the next couple of weeks. So something to also just for, I know employees uh, particularly right now feel a lot of uncertainty and are sort of wondering how they're gonna cover bills and things like that. So these are um, three really solid resources that I hope you guys will help um, share with your employees who may be impacted by um, closures. Let me go on to the next slide. Um, and so we'll go into um, the Gillum County Small Business Stabilization Grant. Um, so I alluded to this during our call last week, um, but Gillum, the Gillum County Court met this morning at 10 o'clock via video conference and um, voted to establish a new program. It's called the Small Business Stabilization Grant Program. And it's for the purpose of providing a one-time one short-term financial support to businesses and organizations that are impacted by the pandemic. And um, we've set aside $150,000 for the program and it will be administered through uh, the Condon Chamber of Commerce. We have an agreement with them um, that was also approved this morning. And so um, Kaylin will be sort of um, the point person on those applications. Um, to give you an overview of who's eligible and for what purposes, um, you have to be, the applicant has to operate within Gillum County. You need to be able to demonstrate financial hardship um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And, um, and you need to be a registered for-profit business, that includes home businesses, a nonprofit organization or fraternal organization. And we're asking that um, applicants must be registered with, this, with the Oregon Secretary of State's office. So we need to be able to check that you're a valid business and that's how we're going to be doing that is um, making sure that you're registered with the Secretary of State's office. Um, the funding for this grant program will be used um, to cover, can be used to cover employee payroll and benefits, um, building lease or mortgage payments for, um, uh, for brick and mortar businesses, um, equipment lease payments, utility bills, and business insurance. And this is just a little bit more um, guidelines for folks. As I mentioned before, the Condon Chamber of Commerce is going to be administering the, um, the program on behalf of the county. We've already cut the check um, for them this afternoon and um, they have it. So they'll be ready to disperse funds here pretty quickly. Again, I just wanna reiterate, um, this is important for folks to understand that the stabilization grants are really intended to serve as a funding bridge to sort of get you through these hard couple of weeks into the point where state and federal resources can be fully accessed. So our expectation is that 
applicants are actively and aggressively seeking out those federal and state resources as they become available. Um, they're not, our grants are not intended to address long-term economic recovery needs or to replace, to fully replace lost business income. So the, the whole idea is to make sure that our businesses use these funds to remain viable until those federal and state resources are available. So just wanna be really clear about that. Um, the, in terms of the application process, there's a really simple two-page application form and a very simple single-page budget form. Um, and then the, there's a couple of requests for some financial um, statements. Um, applications are gonna be accepted on a rolling basis until the funds, um, the funds are exhausted. So um, they'll, we'll be taking them electronically to the Chamber of Commerce um, and the materials are available online now, actually, at the Condon Chamber. We just launched it um, here about an hour or so ago, um, got those finalized. So um, you can go to the Condon Chamber's um, uh, website after we hop off here to see those. And of course, if you need any help completing those, please don't hesitate to reach out to the Chamber um, or to the County Court. We're happy to help um, answer questions. Um, to give you a little bit of background on how funding decisions will be made, the Chamber um, will be convening what we're calling the Small Business Stabilization Committee. And the, this committee will consist of representatives from the Chamber, Gillum County, um, Bank of Eastern Oregon, Columbia Basin Electric, the City of Condon and City of Arlington, and the Small Business Development Center out of uh, the Columbia Gorge uh, Community College. And, um, to sort of let you know the thinking behind that, the idea was that we would be putting together all of the potential partners who have um, potentially business with you, whether that's for utility payments or electric payments, um, if you have loans to the Bank of EO. And the idea was that we would be able to, as a team, sort of coordinate those relief efforts. So I know the City of Condon, for instance, is looking at potentially some utility relief for businesses in Condon, and so the idea was that we would coordinate those um, and um, and then see um, and and then be able to really make sure that, for instance, the county funds don't need to cover utilities if the city is is providing credits on their side. So just provide sort of a one-stop shop um, for all of us to be able to see those applications and then try to proactively find the best combination of relief for businesses. So Kaylin just actually sent me a message that said um, that all of the application materials will be up by 5.30 p.m. today. So pretty much as soon as we wrap up the call. Um, let me see what else. Uh, the other thing to note is that the um, applicants who are successful to the grant for the grant will be required to sign a grant agreement that basically will just lay out the allowable uses of the fund and any reporting requirements. Um, there will be some reporting requirements attached to that um, that will go back to the chamber. The chamber will then use that to report back to the county court on the usage of the funds. And we'll, we'll be using some of that raw data as well just to help paint the picture for our state and federal representatives in terms of what's happening on the ground for layoffs and those sorts of things. So you'll see when you look at the application, we ask a lot of questions about you know, the situation with your employees, have you reduced hours, those kinds of things. I want folks to understand we're not, we're not asking those questions to be nosy about what's going on. Part of that is to help capture the full picture for our federal folks. Who are um, who have already started reaching out about doing a round four of support, um, and are are wanting sort of anecdotal information about what's happening on the ground with businesses. So um, that gives you a little sense of of what's happening. Let me go on to the next one. Maybe. Okay. Hmm. There we go. Um, any questions before I go on about the grant program? Anybody? I, I have questions, but I'm assuming you're going to talk more about the grant and the amount of funding available and caps or anything like that. 
Yeah, so right now we don't have caps on it. We, the county court did not establish that. Um, my anticipation is that the stabilization committee will be looking at sort of that whole universe of how many people are applying and about how much they're applying. Um, my initial assumption was that we would probably try to keep that to $10,000 only because um, given that we are working with 150,000, um, 10,000 a pop will actually go pretty quickly. <laughs> so our hope is that some businesses may need less than that. And so I'm hoping we'll be able to reach maybe 20 to 30 businesses with that amount. Um, we'll see kind of what that need is. Um, the county court um, could potentially provide additional funding if it really looks like um, we're well short of what's needed in the community. So, and for, business, for businesses that are asking, is there a expected um, uh, turnover time or how, how quickly they can anticipate fundings being available? So um, the funding has already been um, turned over to the chamber already. And so it would just be an internal how quickly um, those applications will go into Kaylin. So it's really how quickly they come in and then she can convene that group. I would assume um, that probably that committee could meet next week and make funding decisions and have cuts, uh, checks cut um, sometime next week. Does that sound uh, reasonable, Kaylin? I see you nodding. <laughs> Yes, that is our anticipation. Uh, as the grant applications come in, I've uh, downloaded a program that allows me to send it out to the stabilization committee in a safe and secure uh, private format. Um, and then we will be making determinations just uh, application by application. Awesome. Any other questions before we go on to the next? Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to note, this is um, only going to be applicable for maybe a handful of people on the call. Um, this morning, the county court also approved a six-month uh, payment reprieve for small businesses who've been impacted by COVID-19 who currently have business development loans with Gillum County. So I know there's probably um, maybe two or three that are probably on this call that even have a loan. We don't have that many out there. So I just wanted to note for you that um, the county court did approve that. And so for those businesses who are hearing this news, if you could reach out directly to me, um, my contact information is on the slide deck and, and in the phone book. And um, basically what we'll be doing is sending those off to our county um, council. And so the court instructed me today that the April payments obviously um, would fall under that. They can be delayed. And so um, don't worry about sending us your check for April if you're planning on asking for a reprieve. Um, and then uh, it'll just take a little bit of time for our county council to actually turn around new loan um, documents to be able to, um, to be able to formalize that reprieve. So just wanted to flag that for, I know there's a couple of folks on here that that's applicable to. Um, next, I just wanted to also let you know, we talked about this a little bit during the last um, round table that we did, but we formalized a partnership this morning with the Condon Chamber of Commerce to provide ongoing support for small businesses and organizations that are impacted by the pandemic. Um, and so in, in addition to administering the grant that I was just telling you about, um, the chamber is going to be available to assist businesses um, who are doing business in Gillum County uh, in developing um, sort of customized stabilization and recovery plans. The idea being that you'll be able to talk to Kaylin um, and talk to her about your specific needs or situation and she'll be able to help connect you to um, state and federal and local resources that would be applicable. So um, for instance, we've, we've already seen this play out. We, had, um, we actually had a business reach out to us wanting um, to do some upgrades to help protect the safety of their employees. And that, that came into Kaylin and she was able to connect um, the business with 
um, with a state partner that had funding available for that specific need. And so they're cutting a check for, for that business in order for them to be able to do those upgrades. So um, if you've got those, those needs, um, the, the whole point is to reach out directly to Kaylin. The county will be providing um, some, some funds to the chamber to be able to facilitate the extra time that Kaylin will be putting in to, to help be a resource to everybody. Um, and then addition to, in, in addition to that, the Chamber is also going to be continuing to advocate. I know Kaylin's engaging. We've got some regional economic recovery teams that are in place that Kaylin's engaging with and advocating on your behalf for. Um, and then as well as just maintaining those channels of communication that I think a lot of you clearly are connected with or you wouldn't be on this call <laughs> um, so that you um, feel supported and um, and you know have the latest information on on what we're doing so Kaylin do you have anything you want to add anything I missed or things that you really want to highlight for businesses on that partnership uh, just how excited I am for this opportunity to be working uh, with such an incredible team not only our membership but the staff at Gillum County so no one on this call is alone we are all in this together reach out to, to those closest to you. Uh, together, we will find the right solution. So don't get discouraged, uh, stay hopeful, and uh, we'll get through this, guys. We will get through this. Yay. Okay. Um, I also, for folks, I know there may be some businesses on here who um, are saying that's all well and good, but I'm not in Gillum County. <laughs> How, what do I do kind of thing? And so I wanted to also walk through just a couple of the, um, the state and federal programs that are available um, to businesses even beyond Gillum County kind of flag those for you um, so that you're aware of those things and then also talk a little bit about some upcoming additional trainings that Kaylin's got in the works um, so that um, you can stay connected to the resources in our region. So we'll start with um, the Paycheck Protection Program. This came out of the CARES Act um, that Congress passed again about a week ago, the $2 trillion um, recovery and relief bill. Um, this is a, a new loan program, um, a forgivable loan program for small businesses um, to keep employees on the payroll. Um, there's a loan maximum that's a, the lesser of uh, $10 million or two and a half times your average monthly payroll. Um, and what it is is uh, $350 billion, that's billion with a B, in federally guaranteed loans that are administered through private lenders, um, to assist businesses with 500 or fewer employees. Um, the funds can be used to cover payroll, health benefits, mortgage or in, uh, mortgage interest and leases, and utilities during the outbreak. If you are a small business, a 501c3 nonprofit, a veterans organization, tribal business, sole proprietor, independent contractor, or self-employed um, business owner, you are eligible for this program. So please take note of that. Um, so how does the loan forgiveness work? Um, basically, for businesses that maintain employees on their payroll, you can receive a loan forgiveness for eight weeks of the costs related to those um, eligible, um, eligible expenses that I just talked about. If you've already laid off employees, you are able to hire them back and still qualify. And in order to receive forgiveness, you need to work with your lender to justify your payroll was maintained throughout the documentation period. So I think this is a really sort of cool program because it is um, actually administered through local lenders. Um, so hopefully that makes it a little bit more comfortable for folks. Um, and so you'll just wanna talk to your local lender about what that application process looks like and get that started. Um, I will note that Bank of Eastern Oregon is, is getting um, ready to be able to participate in that program. So for folks who are in Gillum County, um, that is one option you can go to if you're interested in that particular program. Any questions on that? I'm not an expert on the federal stuff, but, um, but if you have questions, I can either try to answer them or bring them back um, and get you information on it. Um, I had one quick question. 
Go ahead. So you said that it's uh, they're privately administered, so we'd probably go to the Bank of Eastern Oregon. Is that what you just said? Exactly. Yeah, they're, um, they're lenders, so banking institutions that are, um, that are SBA lenders are, um, are administering the program. So yeah, Bank of, uh, Kaylin uh, actually spoke with Jeff Bailey with Bank of EO um, earlier, and, and they are one of the participating um, institutions. So, so you can go, you can definitely check in with them and talk uh, about how that would look for applications. And then, do I understand it correctly where it's a, it's a payroll, it's a, up to two and a half times payroll, and then for the forgiveness on the loan, you just prove that you indeed dispersed it as such? I don't, I don't know what all the documentation looks like. Um, I don't know if Kaylin or do you guys have any more information on on what that documentation process would look like? Do you want me to answer that, Elizabeth? That yes. would be awesome. Great. <laughs> yes, please, Greg. <laughs> yeah. So what that's going to look like is they uh, they will ask documentation for your payroll for the last year, and uh, like Elizabeth said, you'll calculate that. Uh, average monthly cost and multiply it by 2.5 to get your loan amount. Then when the loan is originated, uh, you will have eight weeks from that date and all of the expenses relative to your payroll, including your utility bills, uh, rent and interest that can also be included in that will be uh, calculated and will be forgiven against whatever you take out up to 100%. And if you have laid anybody off, you will have to the end of June to bring them back up any uh, or uh, re-employ them or any other employees to the same staffing level of the prior year. Uh, anything short of that, um, you will be deducted proportionally in terms of the amount that will be forgiven. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Other questions on the payback uh, paycheck protection program? The uh, forgiveness is based on principal only, right? It's not, um, not based on interest or the interest isn't uh, forgiven? Um, you mean on the loan itself, the PPP? Right. Uh, yeah. And It'll, it'll be on the principal, but you will have a six month deferral um, on principal and interest for that loan. So you, you won't have to make payments on that particular loan for six months, but the loan does come due in two years. Nice. I have a question about the loan amount. Um, is it two and a half times the average monthly payroll? That's a one time loan for Correct. the whole thing? Yes. So if your payroll is ten thousand, your loan would be twenty five thousand. That's correct. And then your payroll that would pay your payroll for two and a half months, right? Uh, the the payroll once you get the loan, you can leverage it however you want, as long as it's going towards those expenses, towards your payroll expenses, and no more than twenty five percent of it can be uh, leveraged towards those additional expenses that are calculated to determine your forgiveness, so your utility bills, um, rent, interest, etc. But there wouldn't be enough loan to pay more, more than payroll, would there? Likely not. Yeah. All right. Other questions? So this might be a, for example, one way you might be able to leverage this is, um, you know, you could look at using the Gillum County grant to cover some of those other expenses, right? So your mortgage, your um, utilities, those kinds of things. And if you attach that with the paycheck protection, then you could have both sort of both sides of that covered. So that may be a way that you look at combining some of these programs together to help get you through um, for, for at least the, the interim. 
Okay, next one I just wanted to flag for you guys is um, Small Business Administration Assistance. Um, there are um, just both disaster grants of up to $10,000 as well as disaster loans of up to 2 million in states, including Oregon, um, where a COVID-19 disaster has been recognized by the Small Business Administration. So um, the grants um, basically are small businesses and private nonprofits can receive grants of up to 10,000 within three days of applying to support their operating costs. And it's important to note that small businesses who receive this assistance, while you can still apply for the page, uh, Paycheck Protection Program, that $10,000 cannot be per forgiven because it's considered double dipping. So, um, and then in terms of the terms for the uh, disaster loans, those loans are capped at $2 million. They carry an interest rate of 3.75% for small businesses, 2.75% for nonprofits, the interest rate um, will not exceed 4% and the loan term is not to exceed 30 years. And so we've got a link on the web, um, on the slide deck for more information on that um, as well as um, directions for how to apply. And again, this is not my program, so I'm not an expert on it, but um, if folks have questions, we'll try to answer them or, um, or go out and get information and bring it back if we can't answer it here. Elizabeth, can I add a, a point of clarification that might be helpful? Yes, please. Um, so with that $10,000, when you go apply for that program, the EIDL loan, they'll ask you if you want to accept a $10,000 advance. That advance is a, is a grant. It's free. You can take that money, whether you, be, are, whether you accept the loan or even if you are turned down for the loan, that's free money. So every small business that is in a farm should be applying for that um, and, and taking that grant. And in terms of how it works with the PPP, you can apply for the PPP as well, but when they're quantifying that um, amount that's forgiven, $10,000 will be deducted from that. So if, if when they quantify, your loan amount and it's $50,000 and 30,000 of it is going to be forgiven based on those eight weeks of expenses, uh, they're gonna deduct that $10,000 and you'll only be forgiven $20,000. So that's just an uh, important uh, thing to realize how that works, but in any scenario, you'll wanna take that $10,000. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> any, other, any other questions about small business uh, administration assistance. Okay, we'll go on. Um, so I want to actually kick this over to Jessica. Um, are you on, Jessica? Yes, I'm here. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. Can you uh, give folks on the phone just a little bit of background about what East Cascade Works is? and then maybe talk about the work share and layoff aversion. No problem. So I'm Jessica Fitzpatrick and I am the director of youth programs, but also compliance at East Cascades Works. We are a local nonprofit organization, but also a workforce board. We are designated by the governor to oversee and implement federal and state resources aimed at training and workforce development. So that's kind of a mouthful, but essentially um, right now, um, in light of coronavirus and COVID, what we are charged with is overseeing resources that are funneled into um, mitigating layoffs and also avoiding layoffs. Um, so what that means for us right now is really working with our local employers across a 10 county region. So we actually oversee um, a 10 county region that spans from Hood River all the way down to Lake County. So um, on a normal day, I am driving um, anywhere from, you know, Gillum all the way down to uh, lovely Klamath Falls. 
Um, but today I get to join you all from um, the warmth of my daughter's playroom. So uh, please forgive her if she comes charging in at some point and makes a lot of noise. Um, so uh, why I'm here today, I wanted to share kind of uh, some exciting opportunities that are, are hopefully here to support you all in Gillum County and beyond. Um, in your neck of the woods, we, we are there to support you in Hood River, Wasco, Sherman, Gillum, and Wheeler counties. Um, we have boots on the ground. Uh, Mike Scroggs, who's based typically um, out of Columbia Gorge Community College and the Work Source Center, both in Hood River and in the Dalles. Um, he's now also at home, um, but fielding your calls and emails. He is um, there to support you both with WorkShare, which is an alternative for employers um, who is looking at the potential to have to lay off workers. Um, so rather than having to lay off workers, what WorkShare does is it reduces the time of a group of workers and then we step in to use unemployment benefits to then pay the portion of wages of that group of workers that cannot be paid by the employer. So um, Mike Scroggs can work on, on my behalf alongside you to see if that is potentially a benefit that you as an employer could access. Um, another thing that East Cascades Works is doing on behalf of the state of Oregon and the Department of Labor, the US Department of Labor is implementing resources um, locally to support employers um, who are possibly needing to lay off um, workers specifically related to COVID-19 and coronavirus. So um, think of, um, you know, you had to close your storefront and um, you, um, you, if you're a diner, for example, and you now cannot be open and you can only provide uh, takeout services. So now you have a staff that you can no longer provide wages for. Um, rather than laying them off, um, you know, we can potentially work with you to, to keep them on the payroll, for, provide other duties for them to maybe do remotely, um, and provide supplemental wages. We want to still encourage you to apply for these other wonderful resources that Elizabeth has talked about previously. So um, we aren't working in competition with any of these other resources. We look at this as coupling um, and uh, simply uh, another asset, another benefit. So um, would encourage you to, to look to Mike Scroggs and, and work with him to see if these are um, uh, potentially a good for, a fit for you. Um, we've had employers do things from providing um, deep cleaning um, within their within their um, building to get them set up for uh, social distancing to make it appropriate, putting up glass barriers between their staff and customers, um, all the way to providing uh, cell phones and laptops to be able to make a remote work environment possible. So it's pretty flexible funding. Um, we're accepting up to $5,000 in requests. Um, and we have about $120,000 right now available. Um, and that is potentially going to go up as we see the need increase. So um, we are channeling all of that through Mike. Um, he's inundated with those requests, but I encourage you to reach out to him if you are an employer and you, and you do have some gaps in, in keeping people employed. Great. Anybody have any questions for Jessica on WorkShare or layoff aversion? It looks like WorkShare question, are workers able to receive a $600 bonus as they would if they applied for unemployment? specifically related to WorkShare. So WorkShare is actually to benefit the employer. 
So it uses unemployment, unemployment insurance benefits to supplement the employee's wages while they're still employed. So the employer actually applies for work share, not the employee themselves. So the, the employee wouldn't actually be laid off in a work share situation. Good question. Additional questions? Yeah, Jessica, just to be clear, with the layoff aversion, that request is just one per employer. Um, is, is the same limitation on the work share or how many uh, they can apply for on behalf of their employees? So you're not limited on the number of employees that you can apply for for work share. So the group of employees is not, there is no limit on that. You would be, you would be applying on behalf of the, the business. Right. So it would be one application, yes. Okay. And I would say that um, the, the benefit to having one point of contact for all of these um, all of these programs that are sort of channeled through uh, work source writ large is that if there are any um, federal requirements uh, for eligibility, um, because these are all sort of funneled through the Department of Labor, um, if there are any eligible eligibility requirements where if you receive one benefit, it might make you ineligible for another. Mike knows that, so would be able to work with you to ensure that you aren't potentially receiving something that could later become a detriment. And we'll make sure we're working with you to ensure that as well on the back end. Great. Any other questions for Jessica? It's a quiet group. All right, let me go on to the next slide, if I can, maybe. Yeah, so the, um, next steps, I just wanted to flag for you that um, Kaylin is going to be um, really running with some additional learning opportunities. So the um, chamber is teaming up with the Small Business Development Center um, to sponsor some webinars um, to talk about services and resources for small businesses that are available um, through the Development Center. And um, you can learn about these funding sources. If you have more questions that we, that we didn't get to or you think of after we hang up here, that would be a good place to go to ask some of those questions about um, these, these funding sources that are coming out. Um, they're also going to be providing just some basic tips on um, what you can do to prepare for future emergencies and promote economic resiliency. So you'll see um, the next uh, webinar will be actually tomorrow at three o'clock. And I, Kaylin, can you remind me when your second one is scheduled? Yes, it is on third or Tuesday at eight thirty a.m. So that would be on Tuesday, April seventh at eight thirty. So folks will want to make yeah. make note of that. Um, and then I, I got a question from um, Stephen about will today's recorded session be available for us to review? Absolutely. Um, we're recording it now and um, we, will, um, we will be posting it, I think, probably to both the Chamber's website and to Gillum County's website, just so it's in two places. And let's see, I'm getting a note that says that Pat has raised his hand. So Pat, do you have a question? Maybe. You can unmute yourself if you do, Pat. How about now? I can hear you. <laughs> uh, so, hang on. Got a little bit of feedback there. Are you there, Pat? I 
I don't know. We might have lost Pat. Pat, are you still there? Maybe. Followed by the town. <laughs> So it may. Please re enter your meeting ID followed by town. I think we can hear you, Pat. You have not entered any numbers. Please re enter your meeting ID followed by town. Hey, Pat. Goodbye. <laughs> Are you still there? technical difficulties. So I'll, I'll ask if there's any other questions and maybe we'll, um, Pat, if you've got a question, maybe you can just connect directly with Kaylin after this and she can get you connected if it's a question for Jessica or Greg, we can get that connection made for you. Unless you, unless you figure out how to, how to do it before then. Any other questions while we've got the group, while we've got the band together? Oh, let me see. My little chat here. Okay, who else? Looks like Shay Bolker has also raised your hand. Do you have a question, Shay? Yes. Is there a link on the Is there a link on the Condon uh, uh, Chamber for that uh, small business uh, stabilization thing? So there will be, I don't know if it's up yet, but Kaylin was saying it would be probably by 5.30 or so. Um, so yes, there'll be the application will be um, there. Okay, thank you. Other can questions? Can you hear me now? Yep, I can hear you, Pat. Finally back. So my <laughs> question is, it sounds to me like the county court's commitment is a maximum at this time of $150 or $150,000 and that's all they're committed to. It's, that is definitely, that's what the program is funded out right now. I had mentioned earlier that we, um, we may be able to do some additional funds depending on what the need is. And then of course we have a regular business grant um, that will likely be authorized when we pass our next budget. Okay. Any additional questions for folks? So sort of the takeaway message that I hope that we can leave with you is that um, these, these group, this group, the folks who have been speaking on the phone, um, that we're here for you. Um, so make sure that you reach out to us anytime if you've got questions or concerns. If we don't know the answer, we'll connect you to someone who does. So there's no, there's no wrong connection. If you connect with any of the, the four of us who've been speaking, we're happy to make that connection with whoever can help you if it's not us. Um, I just want you guys to know that you're not alone. We'll get through this um, together. So any, any last couple of questions while we've still got folks on the phone? Nobody there? All right, well, I'm gonna stop sharing so I can actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> um, all right, well, with that, if we don't have anything else, um, if you, again, if, you, if we hang up and you think, oh my gosh, I should have asked X, um, please feel free to reach out to Kaylin or me and we'll make sure that you get uh, connected um, to the resource or the person who can answer your question. Um, so please reach out anytime we can help. Um, we're here for you. Let me see. And Greg is posting lots of stuff to everybody. So if you can check your, um, if you can check your chat, you'll see it kind of blinking that he's got some really great um, there's some really great links in there as well for business counseling and other things. Um, and we can have Kaylin send those out as well. Once we've got this recorded and up on the website, um, Kaylin, maybe we can send a link out to people um, letting them know where they can find it. All right. Well, Absolutely. with that, if there's, oh, 
if there's no further questions, um, thank you all for coming again. We've had 45 people on the call. This has been just fantastic. So thanks for your time and um, stay healthy and stay home, save lives, and, and we'll be in touch. Bye. Thank you, thank you everyone. everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye.